Welcome to the shop. In this video, I will look at parting a couple of different diameters and a couple of different steels. And I will also be posting an update on the problem I had with a large diameter bar in a previous video. All right, first we're going to try out this particular parting tool. You can find this on eBay and Amazon without too much trouble. The insert, uh, it's supposed to be a two millimeter insert. I'm going to go ahead and measure the tip and see what it actually measures out at. The tip is 84 thou and it's the same with a micrometer as well. This is uh, 1.5 inches 1144 stress proof steel. A friend needs a washer so I'm going to cut out a washer uh, out of this but his diameter requirement is 1.3 inches so I'm going to turn it down to 1.3 and then part it. We're going to move in a hundred thou. Okay, I'm not going to lock the Z, uh, the carriage. Forming nice chips. I am using the brush, but I'm not dripping the oil in constantly. Well, that parted off very nicely. Something to keep in mind with this tool is that this particular support has got a radius and its radius is such that if I hadn't reduced the OD of the part down to 1.3 inches, the lower lip would have collided. Here's what the finish looks like on the part side. pretty good and running my finger across it you can feel minimal striations but it's not bad at all and here's the finish on the washer again you can make out striations lines and running a thumbnail across you can feel a little bit of scratchiness but overall a very good finish uh, could be put on a sander but it's perfectly functional as it is the next tool we're going to try is this high-speed steel blade. Um, I have a love-hate relationship with this. Uh, it's convenient, it's easy to use, you can resharpen the tip um, and hone it, obviously. But it doesn't stay in the holder very, uh, very well. It comes in different thicknesses too, 3 32nd and 1 8th. I'm going to try the 3 32nds uh, for the next go-around. This is the holder for the tool, uh, and it's pretty commonly available. The way it works is that this wedge goes down and wedges the blade in position, but in reality, there's nothing more than the friction between that and the blade to keep it from getting pushed back. The disadvantage of that is that as the blade gets pushed back, its height at the tip also changes. So you cannot rely on having a consistent height every time you adjust the stick out of the blade. The other thing to keep in mind is that for clearance purposes, the body of the blade obviously is going to be narrower than the, uh, than the blade itself, than the top edge. It's, a, it's called a T-style blade because the top is wider than the support. And here we can see the top is of this 3 to the second blade is 93, 94 thou. The problem comes when you try to insert the blade into its holder. And as you can see, once the blade goes into the holder, the blade is no longer being held absolutely vertical. It's tilted off to one side because of the T being wider than the base. There is a little slant on the inside here, and that may work, but then the wedge that goes down on it may not hold it as accurately either. So sometimes uh, I've used a shim, like this uh, little 
15 thou shim that I'll put in here and hope that that'll keep the blade more vertical. Okay, we're going to go with a stick out of about 0.8 inches from the farthest point. Okay, next I'm going to set the uh, blade height using my uh, tool, uh, my center reference. We'll go in at 135 RPM and uh, 2 thou per revolution of feed. One point four inches. All right, that was one point four five inches, and we are through. And here it is once again. This is the other side that I parted with the carbide insert. Definitely rougher. There's a lot to be said about using high-speed steel because you can sharpen it and hone it and you can end up with a very nice finish. Next we'll go a little bit crazy and turn up the RPM to 205. And once again, the finish looks very good. Let's look at what we had parted off. And this is the side that was left over after the previous parting. You can see how the finish changes. And in a, it's kind of abrupt how it changes from the outer rim to the inner part. Uh, that may have something to do with how the bar was um, rolled. It's a uh, cold rolled. And here's the part that was attached. And you can see the nubbin again, fairly smooth, fairly smooth surface and minimal feel when you drag your thumbnail across it. Here's the older one. Okay, now we'll check the thicknesses. 36 thou, 35, 36 five. And let's see what it is closer to the center. Thirty-one five. And as promised, this is an update from the last time when I was trying to part this bar. We'll start off by showing a clip of where things went wrong. cracking sound was the blade tip cracking off. And here's the tool. The tip looks fine, but the side has chipped and cracked. And here's a top view, and you can see how that crack has spread. Okay, we will try one more time. This time we will go in at 90 RPM, which is about um, 120 surface feet. 
and power feed will be at one thou per revolution. And this is what I mean by getting crowded. Not much room left here. And here's the swarf. Clearance from a different angle. Okay, now for something completely crazy. Let's see if we can extend the blade stick out by another half an inch. The current support from the tip to the farthest support on the base is about one inch. We'll see if we can make it 1.5 inches. Okay, I think it's about where we want it to be. Batten down the hatches and let's see if we hear the old cracking sound or not. First, we'll feed it in manually and then see how it goes.
1.5 inches on the diameter. The hole that I had drilled for the tailstock support was enough. Oh yeah, here you are, you can see the divot for the tailstock support. So it actually cut all the way through and the finish is very decent. Running my hand over it, my finger, thumb over it and the thumbnail I can just feel a few minimal scratches but mostly it's very good. Finish is decent, um, you can see striations. But it's not bad. And here's a little nubbin of the stock left behind. And I will have to cut that open. That's where the uh, last disaster occurred. Okay, so this is the part that we just took off the lathe. And after slicing through the middle with a bandsaw, here's what the insides look like. Now this is the one where the disaster occurred the last time. We were able to get close to an inch in and then the bleed, um, the insert uh, blue. And I think that was related to the fact that the uh, end of the bar was not well supported uh, at all. Uh, it was just being held at the near end, at the headstock end in the chuck. The chuck was gripping very tightly, but obviously there was, uh, that was not enough. There's a slight divot right here that may be where the blade exploded, I mean the insert exploded. I don't see the same divot on the other side, so I suspect uh, it got uh, off, uh, off track a little bit and then got caught on something. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if so, please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you.